Alright. Our home play should be on pages 259 and 261. See how you do with that. Okay. Only. My bad. Yeah. 259 and 261. All right. Once again, yes. I could give you my microphone. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, page two fifty nine to sixty one only for the home play. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. So, um, I'm sorry. Our objective for today: I can graph polynomial functions. I can graph polynomial functions. Now, this is starting to sound familiar. Um, now, we you don't need a fair model. I'm going to do a quick review. It's going to go pretty fast, but I need you to stay focused, please. And then we're going to do a quick activity to uh, make sure we patch up a couple of things that I want you guys to uh, remember for today's uh, act or lesson. However, I'm going to start with uh, a review about polynomials. I remember back when, when you were in uh, middle school, that I, uh, we covered polynomials, and I said that from this point forward, they weren't going to leave, right? I said you were going to be walking to the high school, passing by Donut Avenue or something, and then all of a sudden somebody from the alley goes, you turn, polynomials. They're going to be everywhere from this point forward. Therefore, here goes a quick review. Polynomial. Let's see if we remember the definition. Think about it. Definition of polynomials. Definition of polynomials is monomials or sum or difference of monomials. Kind of, sort of, yes? Let me review this just to make sure we got it. What is a monomial? A monomial is only one expression of one term. And you're not copying this. If you want, you can copy it up to you, but this is just for review. Monomial, there it is, only one term. Here goes another monomial. There it is, also known as polynomial. Here goes another polynomial. Let's see, how many monomials does this, this one have? One, two. Are they being added? Yes, that's why it's a polynomial. How about this one? How many monomials? Three. One, two, three. That's why it's a polynomial. And each monomial, this one's being added, this one's being subtracted. That's why it says monomials or some are different of monomials. Okay. Any questions with this? Each monomial in a polynomial is known as a term. You guys remember that term? Yes. So what can we tell about examples and non-examples? That all these examples are very good. Expressions only. And what are the non-examples? Equations. So polynomial is an expression. And what else? It has various terms. Okay. So here goes another recap. I put together this uh, little table when you guys covered Algebra 1. You guys remember this? Yeah. And I said, a polynomial has two names, a first name and a last name. A first name by degree, which is in red. And what are the names by degree? If it's zero degree, it's a constant, one degree linear, and then quadratic, cubic, quartic, quintic, and then from there to the degree, six degree, seventh degree, tw oh. what if I said 20 degree, no? All right, never mind. You guys get the idea, right? And then the last name is, is because of the terms. How many terms does it have? If it's one term, a monomial, two terms, binomial, three terms, trinomial, anything after that is known as a polynomial. All right. Good review, yes? So, for example, if I was to give you this one, Roman numeral one, here's an, uh, a polynomial, x squared, y to the third, plus three. To find out the name of that polynomial, first I need to find out the degree. Well, I circle the first term. What's the degree of this one? Five. Why five? Because I add the exponent on the variable. The degree of this term is zero because it doesn't have a variable. What's the highest degree? So the name of this one is a quintic. How many parts does this 
Oh, no, we have one part, two parts. So this is a binomial. So then that means number one would fit here, and the name would be quintic binomial. Fairly simple, yes? All right, good. And I see a lot of you very uh, focused. So I appreciate that. Yes. The highest degree, yes. So with that said, lock your toolbar. I'm going to give you some for you to uh, input there and see if you uh, got this. Since you were paying very close attention. All right, here we go. On your paper, write this down. Roman numeral number one. Here it goes. Let's do, um, yeah, on your Cornell notes or wherever you're taking notes. Here you go. Uh, the first polynomial is 23 cubed. Roman numeral number two. Let's do x, y cubed plus 2x plus 1. Roman numeral number three. Let's do x squared y so I'll leave it there. Y, and then we'll do, uh, I'll leave it like that. And number four, let's do uh, X to the third, Y to the third, plus 3Y, plus 2. Let's see how you do with those. Copy that and go. I want you to place the Roman numeral where it belongs and write the name of the polynomial, as soon as you have it, press send. You should also have it in your notes. Ready, go. All right, here we go. Um, they asked me to go over it. Here it goes. Oh, it's frozen. There it go. There it go. Okay, there it is. Uh, there you go. <laughs> No, not like that? All right. Uh, number one, help me with number one, please. Xavier, yes. go. <laughs> Constant binomial. Be nice. Hands if you agree with that. Close. Let's go through the process one more time. Here it goes. <laughs> Guys, focus. Look at it. What's the degree of this term? What's the one because the variable uh, has an exponent of one? So that means it's a what? Linear. How many parts do you see? Only one. So this one would go right there, and the name would be linear monomial. Hands if you got that. Okay, good. Uh, Zab, pass the one number two. Carlo, number two, where did you place that one? <laughs> Cubic trinomial. And do you agree with that? Close. Once again, here goes the process. What is the degree of this term? What is three plus one? Four. What is the degree of that one? One. Degree of that one, zero. What's the highest one? Four. We go with the highest degree. That means it's a what? Quartic. How many terms do we have? One, two, three. Three terms, which is here. So that means this one belongs right there. And what's the name of that polynomial? Quartic trinomial. Now, this should be reviewed. You guys should have already covered this in algebra one. It should be coming back. Okay, here we go. Let's go to the next one. Part three, unite. Here goes. I'm going to go over the third one, since it seems like there's a disturbance in the force. Here it goes. Uh, how many terms do we have here? Since there is no addition or subtraction in between, that means this is one term. What's the degree of this term? What is two plus one? Three. That means this is a cubic. Since it's only one term, it's a monomial. So that one belongs right 
sir. This is a cubic monomial. And here goes the last one. Here it goes. First term is six. The second term is one. The third term is zero. Highest degree is six. So this is the sixth degree. Three terms. So this is a trinomial. So that one goes right here. And this is known as a sixth degree trinomial. Okay. We're going to do one more. Do this one on your paper. Number five. Let's do um, x squared plus 8y minus 2. An invisible one here. All right, you got it? Yeah. Okay, here we go. What'd you get? Joshua. Oh, what is it? Quartic trinomial? Quadratic. Oh, quadratic trinomial. Quadratic trinomial. He's saying that it goes here. Let's find out. What degree is this? Two. Degree? One. Degree? Zero. Highest degree? Two. That means it is a quadratic. Three terms. Three terms. Quadratic trinomial. That is correct. All right. Good review? All right. Good. Now, if there's some of you that uh, are having issues with names or classification of polynomials, you need to know this. Because tomorrow we're moving on and we're getting into polynomials full on. So, my suggestion, I'm recording this lesson, go back to it, look at the names by degree, look at the names by term, practice again the polynomials that were in there, and see if you get it. Because you need to know this. That's a cute, lovely. All right, good. All right. So, now that we know what polynomials are, we also know what functions are. Yes? Tell your neighbor the definition for functions, please. Yeah. Yeah. A relation that has exactly one output for each input. Okay. So, we got this. So, think about the definition for a polynomial function. Now that we know what a polynomial is, we know what a function is. Here goes the definition for a polynomial function. A standard form polynomial that is a function. Can you picture it? Let's see. f of x equals 2, is this a polynomial function? Yes. Monomial, and it's a function. How about this one? Monomial function. How about this one? It's glitching, it should be an equal sign. Yes. How about this one? Yes. What do we notice on all of these? That it has a what? equal sign and it's a function. All right. Look at these. Tell you never why these are not polynomial functions. Yes, everyone, these are what? They're polynomials only which are expressions and these are functions. Okay. We good? All right. Copy this table please on your uh, on your paper. Make sure you leave a couple of lines per row. Probably you do, or at least half a page. Copy that, please. I'll give you uh, one minute. Go. All right, as you're finishing that up, uh, let me give you a quick uh, reminder. You're back in elementary. <coughs> Here it goes. Writing utensils down, look up to the screen. So in elementary, your teachers introduced you to plotting points on a coordinate plane, if I recall correctly. Some of it in kinder, but this is what it is. Here it goes. And they said, all right, kids, 
Today we're going to learn about the coordinate plane. The coordinate plane has four sections. That's why this is called quadrant, because it has how many sections? Four, from the Latin word quattro. Quadrant, quattro. We always start from this one. This is quadrant one, and we work our counterclockwise. So this is two, this is three, and this is four. Okay. Questions with the coordinate plane? No. And then, for now, fast forward, I'm going to draw you a, a, uh, a graph. Ready? Here it goes. All right. Where did it begin? What quadrant? And it ended in? Now check this out. Right now I'm going to have you do an activity by yourself and you're going to fill out that table. But you're going to go to Desmos and I'll give you the screen. Give me a second. But in Desmos they do not show you the graph with arrows at the end. This is what they show you. What is it missing? The arrows. However, by looking at it, according to the little window that we have up to right there, what quadrant did it start? Over here, you're assuming it's quadrant three, and where does it end? One. So what I want you to do with that table I just gave you, when you write the function I give you, just draw what you see, what it looks like, and say it begins in quadrant three, and it ends in quadrant one. That's all I want to know. Make sure you put arrows at the end. Agree with me? Yes. All right. So which functions shall we enter? Well, and, and let's say this, this function I just did is function f of x equals uh, x to the q. Because I just made that up. Okay? However, write these down. f of x equals x. The next one down is f of x equals negative x. The next one down is f of x equals x squared. The next one down is f of x equals negative x squared. The next one down is f of x equals x cubed. Hmm. What do you think will be the next one? f of x equals negative x cubed. What do you think the next one would be? Very good. X to the fourth. And the next one, f of x equals negative x to the fourth. What is the next one? F of x equals x to the fifth. What is the next one? That is correct. And we're going to stop after... There. Only. Okay? Get another space? Okay. Well, get another paper. Boom. That just happened. Let's go. <laughs> All right, here we go. All right, you have Desmos in front of you. Start inputting your function. See what the graph looks like. Draw your graph. Which quadrant does it start? Where does it end? You have, for six functions, I'll give you four minutes. Ready? Copy that and go. Let's see. Who got this? Yes? Quadrant three and quadrant one. For right now, I'm not going to write the Roman numbers so I can go a little bit faster. How about this one? Quadrant two, quadrant four. This one, quadrant two, quadrant one. This one, quadrant three, quadrant four. This one, quadrant three, quadrant one. 
Let me go to f of x equals x to the fourth. Who did something like this? But they extended the little part right here. Yes? Quadrant 2, quadrant 1. f of x equals x to the fifth. They did something like that, but very extended here in between. Quadrant what? 3, quadrant 1. How about f of x equals x to the sixth? Something like that, extended here. Quadrant two, quadrant four. All right, I mean, one, sorry. What about the negatives? Well, right now, let's stick with the positives. Look at those. There's a pattern here. Observe it, don't say it out loud, keep it to yourself. <laughs> I don't know. And by the way, let me take out the negatives for right now. Did anybody catch the pattern? All right, let's see if it's true. Here's a question. Question is, what happens to the graph if the function has a positive coefficient and an odd exponent power? What happens to the graph when the function has a positive coefficient and an even ex exponent power? Or I included this, f of x equals x to the odd power, f of x equals x to the even power. Type in your answer, I'll give you about 35 seconds and then we're moving on really quick. F, what happens to the function if it's f of x equals x to the odd power and f of x equals to the even power? Type it in, please. You got 30 seconds. Ready? Go. All right. So now that we saw some patterns on graphs, let's see how we do with graphing uh, polynomial functions. Hurry up, hurry up. Copy this one. I'm going to do this one completely, then have you copy, and then you're going to do one by yourself, and then take a picture, send it in. Okay? Here it goes. So, it says, well, sorry. It says, sketch the graph of the polynomial function. f of x equals x times x plus 2 times x plus 5. Okay, writing utensils down, look up to the screen. Here it goes. So, one thing that you guys should notice on this one, this equation's already factored. Who noticed that it's already factored? Yes. So, what's the only step that they skipped if we were to start from the very beginning? They should have made f of x equal to what? Zero. x, x plus 2, x plus 5. From there, now that we have factors, we set each factor equal to zero. All right, from there, I solve. This one's already solved. Minus two, minus two. X equals negative two. Minus five, minus five. X equals negative five. Copy that. I'm not done yet, but that's part of it. Copy that. All right, so far so good. Now we need to graph this. Here we go. Here's my coordinate plane. All right, pay attention because this is the part that some of you get confused with. Writing utensils down, look up to the screen. Let me start here. If this was not factored, what would the degree of that polynomial be? Let me show you. What is x times x? x to the second. But then it has another x here, so what is x times x squared? So the original one has something of x to 
the third degree. So what did we say about e, uh, about odd number exponents, that they start in which quadrant? Third. Third, and they end where? First. With something in between. All right, let's find out the in between. What is the x equal to here? Zero. How about here? Negative two. How about here? Negative five. Copy that. Yeah. I understand. Why is it that simple? Because we just did the exploration with the graph so we can see where it starts and where it ends. So Mr. Q, so what you're saying that all the ones that have odd number exponents always start down here? Yes, that's what I'm saying. So that means we just need to connect the dots in between? Yes, that's what I'm saying too. And we always go from left to right. Right? Right. <laughs> I should have been left. <laughs> All right, on your screen you have another one. See if you can do that one by yourself. Example 1Q, copy on that paper. Okay. On your, um, my bad. <laughs> copy it on your Cornell notes. Yeah? Yeah. All right. Oh, like a paper. I got this in here, Mr. Q. Good. <laughs> Ready, go. No. To be just about done? No? Share with your neighbors, see what they got, see if they have something similar to you. Help them out, please, and then I'll show you mine. All right, here it goes. There's the work, x equals 0, x equals 3, x equals 7. Is that correct? Yeah. Where does it start? Quadrant 3. Where does it end? Quadrant 1. So let's see. Hands, have you got that? That is correct. Starts at quadrant 3 and then quadrant 1. When is it flipped? the other way around when it's a negative. All right, let's crank it up a notch. Oh, snap. Copy this, oh, not that one, this one. Example three, hurry up, hurry up. Let's do this one together. 0 equals x, x plus 3. How many times do I write x plus 3? x plus 3, that's true. And then x minus 2. Set it equal to 0, x equals 0. x plus 3 equal to 0. x plus 3 equal to 0. And x minus 2 equal to 0. To save time, this is already solved. What would be x for this one? How about for this one? Negative 3. And for this one? x equals 2. Now, what do you guys notice? How many x's do we have now? 4. That means that the original function has something of x to the fourth power, which means that begins where? Quadrant 2, and it ends where? Quadrant 1. It starts over here, and it ends over here. However, let's plot our roots. 0, x minus 3 two times. Look what I'm going to do. I'm going to put a bigger dot when it's a double root. And then x2 is right here. 
You're saying, Shakir, why did you put a bigger dot? Because when it's a double root, that it, it only shows up once here, that means that the graph barely touches. There it is. Home play is pretty much the same. Just make sure you set them equal to zero, and then your sketch, go from left to right and see what you get. Have a good one, guys. Enjoy your home play. See you guys tomorrow. Bye. Log out. Thank you.